<clears throat> Hi, everyone. Um, thanks for joining me today. We are talking about nail care today in dogs, particularly uh, dogs who can't really be touched. So those of you who have really fearful or sensitive pups um, and can't handle them or can't handle them much, we're going to talk about some kind of stopgap measures to try to keep their nails from getting out of control uh, until you can make some progress with their handling training. All right. So let's jump into the slides. Nail care for fearful dogs who can't be touched. Um, if you're with me live today and have questions um, while I go over the material, go ahead and put your questions underneath wherever you're watching the video and it'll pop up for me. Okay, so who is this for? If you have a dog who um, you can't touch their feet at all, maybe you can't touch the dog anywhere at all, they're, they're just not okay being touched. And in a more severe case, not only can you not touch the dog, but maybe your dog currently won't even eat in your presence. So you've got a really fearful dog who can't eat when you're in the same room as them. Um, we're going to talk about options for all of these scenarios. And I wanted to mention real quick, um, nail care isn't like, um, it's not optional. It is healthcare. So the nails you see in this photo, which are kind of curled under, um, that's a real health issue for a dog. It can be really uncomfortable to walk. It could change their gait. Um, you may have seen dogs whose nails have kept continued to grow like this and actually curled into their paw pads and cut their paw pads. So um, this isn't something you can ignore. But I know how hard it is if you've got a dog that you can't touch at all. So um, we're going to talk about what to do in that situation, but I do want I do want everyone to be aware this is not something, it's not optional. It's not something you can ignore. It is an important aspect of your dog's health, keeping their nails at a at least reasonable length. Okay, so if you've got, if your dog has nails like this, where they're curling, starting to make a circle, um, or they're curling under your dog's feet, and you know it's going to be a while till you can do a proper trim or file, please call your vet. Ask them about sedated nail trims. Can they sedate your dog to do a nail trim? Um, and so you can have some breathing room them to work on this issue. I did want to mention that there are plenty of folks in um, either the grooming industry or the veterinary in, a vet, in veterinary clinics who will tell you that, well, we don't really need to sedate them. We can just get it done quickly. And while that might be true, um, that they can kind of just pin your dog down or restrain them um, tightly and get it done. It, it doesn't mean that they should do that. There, if your dog is healthy enough to be sedated for this, it'll be more expensive, but it's much more humane, in my opinion, than just um, trying to hold them real tight and do this thing to them that's terrifying. <laughs> um, and if you sedate them and, and they can get their nails done that way for now, you run a lower risk of them um, developing an even greater phobia, basically a greater fear of, of nail care, which will just, if, if you have it forced upon them at the vet, that may just dig you into a deeper hole um, that you might never get out of. You might never be able to get them to accept nail care willingly. So call your vet, ask about sedated nail trim. Personally, I would steer clear of anyone who says, oh, don't worry, we can get it done. We don't need to sedate him, even though he's terrified. Um, and if your vet isn't um, willing to try this um, for some reason other than health reasons, um, go ahead and, and look at the Fear Free website in their directory and see if there's a Fear Free clinic or veterinarian near you who might be willing to work with you on this. Okay. Now, say your dog's not in an emergency situation like the photos I just showed you with the nails curling under and you wanna do some at-home nail care, what are your options? Your options depend a bit on how much, if any, handling your dog will tolerate right now, um, how fearful they are of you, will they eat in your presence? Um, if you've got a dog who won't eat in your presence, I'd love to um, 
hear from you, go ahead and put a comment in sort of, or, or if they will, but you can't touch their feed. I'm just interested to know who we have watching today and where, um, <clears throat> what kind of restrictions you have or your dog, your dog has, your dog has told you about in terms of their foot handling and nail trimming. So say you've got a dog who can't be touched and will not eat in your presence. That's going to be the toughest scenario. And we'll talk about that first. If you've got a dog who can't be touched but will eat in your presence, will eat treats, that gives you a few more options. And then those pups that you can touch them and they'll eat in your presence but you just can't handle their feet, um, they're going to be the easiest, obviously, to work with. All right, so let's start with these toughest dogs, the guys that are really fearful. Um, you can't touch them at all. They will not eat treats in your presence. What can you do to keep their nails worn down? Now, these are not ideal solutions. They're not as good as actually having the nails trimmed or filed, um, but they can work well enough, at least for a time, especially if you are... Um, in, you know, occasionally having sedated nail trims or working toward being able to file or clip the nails. So number one, find ways for them to walk over rough surfaces that will wear their nails down like concrete. Um, and what does this mean? Like, how can you get them to walk around in rough surfaces? Well, obviously going for a walk on concrete is one way, but if you have a dog who you can't touch at all, you probably aren't putting a leash on them to take them for a walk. So if you've got one of the, those dogs, you can't walk them. Um, you can have them engage in food toys on concrete or other rough surfaces. So give them their meals and something that they have to move around and place it on a rough surface, abrasive surface. Um, you can also just scatter their treat, either treats or actually their meals um, on some abrasive surface like concrete. You can set up little scent work games um, that sort of that cover a large area on a rough surface like a a concrete porch or something so that they are moving around looking for food and wearing down their nails a little bit. Um, if, for, if you can't get a dog outside and you need to do something indoors, you can still set up abrasive surfaces on sort of along their common routes of movement to make sure they are walking on um, something rough. So let me show you some video examples with Pancake. He was one of these dogs in the beginning when we um, first had him in our home, we couldn't touch him at all. He wouldn't eat with us in the same room. If I came into the same room, usually he'd run away. Okay, so this is me trying to get sneaky video without scaring Pancake. Um, this is the kind of a concrete patio area outside of where his, his pen was, where he lived when he first came to live with us. Um, and we would, all his meals, he would get in these food toys out back on, um, on the concrete. And it probably depends um, what kind of toy you use as to how, in what way um, the nails get worn down. So I took a few clips, these are more recent, um, of Pancake working with different kinds of food toys just to put some, um, give you some ideas. So right here, he's, I'll play this in a second. He's playing with the Bobolot, which is one of these heavy uh, weighted toys that they kind of, they can knock over and it bounces back up. When you use a toy like this, you'll see that he kind of stays in one area more, but he does um, tend to shift in different directions. And with his one front paw, he'll drag that back backwards sometimes. So this will probably create a different nail wear pattern. Um, than some of the other toys. See, he's kind of backing up, which you see less of with um, the next clip has him, I think, pushing the ball around that little yellow ball. And that's gonna be more forward movement um, usually and, and chasing the ball around. So it's probably a good idea to mix it up a little bit, um, have different kinds of toys that will encourage different kinds of movement. All right, treat scatters are a really easy one. And this is good, especially if you have a dog who, um, who's afraid of food toys or who doesn't engage in, with food toys very much yet. You can just scatter treats or their meal, their kibble um, on a paved area and get them to move around it. So this is, this is Pancake just doing some slow searching. Um, 
there's food scattered all over the porch here. <laughs> Little tiny kibbles. So that's again, mostly forward movement. Uh, scent work. We do have a, um, we have an online scent work class. If you um, haven't seen it yet and want info on it, shoot me a message. Um, I love scent work for fearful dogs. One easy game to set up with scent work is just treats in boxes. You don't have to put them in boxes even, but um, so this is just another way to get the dog moving back and forth over um, a rough surface and also doubles as some enrichment. Um, okay, and then abrasive surfaces on common routes. So this, let me, we did this very early on with Pancake and I'll show you exactly what this looks like. So here, his crate is this tan, very kennel here and kind of the upper right. And right in front of it is a nail board for dogs. Um, it's just homemade. It's a piece of scrap wood with some of that tape that you might put on um, outdoor steps. So they're not slippery. So it's like kind of gritty. It's like a huge emery board, basically. We had that in front of his crate. And he, so he walked over it many times a day because he went in and out quite a bit. Um, and he also, right here, he is standing on a kind of orange uh, square there. That's another nail board. And so you could have more than two, but we had two abrasive um, little surfaces in his pen so that even if he wasn't spending a lot of time outside, at least he was sometimes walking over these um, rough surfaces and wearing his nails down a little bit. And honestly, this might not look like much, but honestly, we, this was enough for him for um, almost a year. It wasn't ideal, but it was enough where, um, you know, he wasn't having nails kind of growing in into his, you know, paw pads or anything. They were, they were longish, but they were sort of within a normal range of length. All right, before I go on to the next thing, it, does anyone have any questions about, um, about these strategies for trying to keep the nails under control when you cannot touch the dog, they won't eat in your presence, um, the real scared pups. I should point out that if you are going to put abrasive surfaces in their pen, um, keep an eye that um, on their feet. I know you probably can't go pick up their feet or anything, but um, you know, don't have it, have them have other options, like places where they can walk on soft surfaces too. Um, just in case they could, in theory, if you have a very active dog, they could abrade their paw pads if it's a very rough surface. Um, I, we never had anything close to that problem, but it's just some, a potential issue to be aware of. All right. So can't handle the dog at all, but will eat in your presence. Does anyone have a dog like this? Um, once a dog will eat when you're in the same room with them, it opens up a lot of training possibilities um, in terms of, you know, using food as your reinforcer in training. Um, so I would still encourage the dog to walk on abrasive surfaces and I'll show you some additional options you can add if your dog will eat when you're nearby. Uh, chasing treats is a, is one of, um, is a favorite activity really for all of my dogs. And it tends to get dogs moving a little more quickly than some of the other things I just showed you, some of the other activities. So that might be a little faster at wearing down nails. Um, you also could start nail board training if your dog will eat when you're in the same room with them. That's really um, a pretty good option. It won't get sort of those upper claws, the thumbs, you know, but um, you can wear down the other nails this way pretty well. So Pancake will show us. So here I'm tossing a treat. I'm tossing treats and having Pancake chase them. Oh, got a dog barking. Sorry about that. Um, and this is something you could do um, if you wanted kibble by kibble for an entire meal if your dog likes chasing treats. So we get some um, nice movement. I wait till he comes toward me and I throw a treat. Uh, it's just a kibble actually and he chases it. Uh, okay, nail board training. This is this is a process. Um, if there's interest in this, um, if you think you'd be interested in this, comment or send me an email or something. I could do a video on how to, um, or at least how we did do this training for Pancake. I just, it would take too long today to go over every step, but I have some of the steps here to give you an idea. 
So here we've got that nail board I mentioned, just scratch, uh, scratch, scrap wood with some um, abrasive tape on it. And this was one of the first days that we worked on this. And I, I just wanted him to step on it. If he stepped on it, then I would say yes and toss a treat to him. There must be a bear outside. Um, as he got better at this, oh, and by the way, I should mention, I, I put this um, on purpose in front of the crate because that allowed him to back himself up into the crate when he was drawing his nails back. And this crate was like a safe space for him. Um, so training at this stage was still like, I had to be very careful not to be cl too close to him, not to look at him too long, not to keep the training session going for too long. So having him have the option really built into the training of backing back up into his crate, um, seemed to help. So here now I'm starting to ask, see how he's dragging his front foot back there again, dragging his front foot back a bit. That would... That's what I was going for. So initially, I would reinforce any foot on that nail board. And then um, I would watch for and differentially reinforce, reinforce every single time. Um, and with better stuff, if I had it, any dragging of those nails back along the board. Um, and we, I slowly raised the board up a little bit. As you can see, I think I have another little piece of scrap wood under it with a, a piece of yoga mat wrapped around it to keep it in place. Um, because I thought that might be easier for him to get his paw farther up the board and then drag it down. I'm also, um, there's another nice dragging motion. You may notice also at some point here, I started delivering, a, he was getting very excited about nail board work at this point, um, delivering the treats on the, well, that was a good one, on the far end right there of the nail board so that he had to come out to get it, which set up his next rep of drawing that nail, that, his foot back. So here, let's go look at this again really quick. I probably should have made some of these clips a little longer for you guys, but um, okay. So here, just waiting for him to put his foot on, toss a treat. And in the very beginning, I was just tossing treats back into his crate because he this felt safe, appeared to feel safer there. Um, then waiting for getting some of that dragging like that, dragging the foot back and delivering the treats. If I delivered the treats toward the end of the nail board that was nearest me, that set him up to do his next dragging his foot back uh, behavior. <laughs> cute um so this is a really good option um especially if you can't handle your dog but they will eat treats around you um i think there is also an online there is an online nail ca care course or maybe it's general grooming or husbandry course available and i think it has a nail board section in it a nail board training section so if you would like that info um shoot me an email and i'll find i'll find that for you all right, so nail board and having pancake out um, as active as possible on concrete kept his nails in check for um, well over a year, thankfully, because there was no way I was going to be able to do his nails. Um, okay, now the last category of dogs I wanted to talk about are dogs who you can't, you can touch them, they'll eat around you, it's just their feet. They don't like you handling their feet. So if you can touch your dog, um, you may be able to take them out for walks. And if you can, for some dogs, doing daily long walks on the sidewalk on asphalt um, is enough to keep them keep most of their nails at least in pretty good shape. So that might be an option for you. Uh, nail board training, of course, you know, you don't have to, you can't, you don't have to reserve nail board training for dogs who you can't touch at all. This would be fine for dogs who's, who don't like their feet touched. And the last thing, and this is another one I could do a video on um, if there is interest, um, is actually training for nail filing or nail trimming for these guys, um, for these dogs who have, who are sensitive about their feet. For this, you do need a dog who 
um, will take treats from you, is at least somewhat comfortable being touched somewhat. It doesn't have to be their feet, but, you know, okay, being close to you will follow a food lure. Um, so it's a, it's a lot more advanced than it requires a dog who is not nearly so fearful or early on in their training as those ones that you um, can't touch at all. But we could go over this if you, if there is interest, just uh, shoot me a message. All right, so that, I guess that is all I had for today. Um, you can see that these aren't, you know, there's no magical way to get a dog's nails done perfectly when you can't touch them. <laughs> um, so do keep in mind that many vet, many vets will do sedated nail trims. Um, that's the way Pancake got his nails, all his nails trimmed um, before I started um, working on his actual training to have his nails done. And then just, you know, keep in mind that, you know, your dog's moving around a lot during the day. Well, maybe not, but they're moving around during the day. And you can take advantage of that by making sure there are abrasive surfaces where they're going to be moving. And you can encourage more movement um, by using some of these techniques we just talked about. So using food toys, treat scatters or kibble scatters, scent work, um, chasing kibbles if they aren't too afraid to you know, chase something that you throw. You have a lot of options. You just need to be a little bit creative. Um, but do, do remember that, you know, that's not always going to, for all dogs, that won't be enough all the time. So you might need to go the veterinary route as well. All right. Any other questions? All right. I'd love a nail board video and nail filing. Okay. Maybe we'll do nail board next week if I have time to find um, all the material. And um, remember, if you are looking for an online course, we don't have one, but um, I'm pretty sure I have a link to one someplace. <laughs> okay. All right. If I don't see any other questions, um, next week, I guess we can continue to talk about nail care. We'll just get into um, the more sort of training options, nail board. Um, Probably nail board will take an entire session. And then the following week, maybe we can, I can show you a little bit of pancakes training for um, me actually filing, you know, his nails by hand. All right, folks, have a wonderful week. Um, I will see you next week, same time, same place. If you try any of these and you have success, or if you have some questions, like you try something, it doesn't quite work. We'd love to hear about it. Send us a message um, or comment on the video so we can help you troubleshoot. All right, everybody, have a great day.